Man, I think he's got a problem here as well. On this episode... He's been dragging himself, so he's got no movement in the back legs. Jeez. Ooh, doesn't look right, does it? You see those injuries? Ooh, he's been through hell. So it's just hanging limp there. Ooh. We're getting to the stage where he's going to have real trouble getting around. Just means so much to us. See how out there it's been pushed right through? The problem with that is, I'm not going to mince my words, we can't regrow those nerves. But first... If you see damage in the house, the chance of it being splodged is reasonably high. <laughs> he is supremely clever. He looks very innocent. I think it's time for some secret splodge surveillance. I'm going to catch him out. If he leaves the backyard, we're going to know about it. Oh my God! <laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> no way. Oh, how's he doing that? He's incredible. It's Stefan. Yes, Chris. How are you? Nice to meet you. This is the amazing splodge. This is the amazing splodge. All right, mate. I've heard a lot about you. Just hope you don't disappoint. All right. So where's it all happening? Uh, out the back. Come through, I'll show you. So what's he been doing? Our problem with splodge is that he keeps escaping. He looks very innocent. Yeah, he looks it. But if you have a look out here, this is where he's escaping from. He scales this wall. <laughs> He scales that? Yeah. How? Well, it took us a long time to figure that out. We had a neighbour who saw it. He was going up the drain pipe. There was, there was something there and he somehow scaled up the drain pipe. Because that's a solid brick wall. Yeah. And a high brick wall too. I mean, that's, you know, it's two metres. My first impression of Splodge is he's tiny. How does he get up onto that wall and away? Is this for real? You know, my concern is that however he's getting out, he's pretty high up there. He's very high. And you've got major roads around here too. I mean, he could live up to his name. Splodge could go splodge if I, he ends up at the wrong spot. Yeah, I mean, that's our worry. With splodge escaping, I guess there's a couple of things that worry me. Mostly, I'm worried about him getting out onto the road because he has escaped once before when, when I didn't close the gate properly and he ran out onto the road and he got hit by a car. And that was very traumatic for him, for us. If you look over here, you can see marks on the vine. This is from the dog. So he's somehow... He does, I mean, look, he, he he's not the world's the biggest dog. No. And he also doesn't jump. Well, you, so he doesn't jump out? If you hold... No, no, if you hold meat above him like this, he, he, he will not jump for it. He cannot jump. Are you he, serious? He climbs. Splodge is exceptionally crafty. He's cunning. He's really, really clever. Once he's done something once, it takes him no time at all the second time. I hate to raise another point, but that's not splodge damage there, is it? If you see damage in the house, the chance of it being splodge is reasonably high. Look <laughs> How did he get up there? Oh, he did that from inside. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was already it was like that. that. Yeah, no, he did that from inside. He went, there's, there's a fly screen there. He climbed on top of the toilet, boom, straight out. If I lock him in the house, he's out. People might think that Splodge is just crazy, but no, he is supremely clever. They built this temporary dog door so that that closes and then there's, there's no way through. Mm. Only the first time I did it, went out for 45 minutes mm. and he was chewed chewed his hole through there, and his little head was poking through. So then I put the stronger board against it. Um, the next time he ripped up this lino here, no. he just doesn't stop. It's just this determination. But anyway, I've got video of him just scratching away at this lino, gnawing at that. Can I have a look? Yeah, we've got it here. So this is you out of the house? Yeah, we've just gone. He looks perfectly innocent when you first leave. So if you keep him inside, he's still like this? Yeah, and, and I mean, he knows that here he's just getting into the rest of the house. He's, he's just busy, isn't he? Everything he does is with purpose. You, you can actually see him actively looking for a new way to escape. Mm. And you can see now he's chewing at it. When he sets his mind to a job, he wants to finish the job, doesn't he? Right now, there's a fair bit on Splodger's rap sheet. He scratches, he chews and somehow he escapes the backyard. For a small dog, he's got a lot going on. 
So how do you actually know that he's escaping in the first place? Well, um, it happened a couple of months ago. Uh, one of my neighbours gave me a call at work and said, Stefan, are you at home? I said, no, I'm at work. Why? And he goes, your dog is on my roof. On your roof? On his roof. So, and this is not this, is not this neighbour, it's not even the next one, it's the one over. <laughs> so three doors down, he ends up on their roof? On their roof. And he's done it now half a dozen times. I keep trying new ways to stop him and he keeps finding a way around. Yeah. And as soon as he gets to the person's place and he's with someone, he's the best behaved dog in the world. He really is. This is the I'm innocent, what are you talking about, <laughs> Dad? Huh. Me climb? No, never. I wouldn't dream of it. Splodge is just behaving so perfectly, but my feeling is this is an act. Maybe he's an actor and an acrobat. You know, I'm really worried about him being hit by a car. Because yeah. that would be just, you know, the kids love him. Mm. Absolutely love him. Yeah. Kind of at our wit's end, actually. Yeah. So to work out how he's ending up up there, you're going to need to catch him in the act. It shouldn't be hard. These days, almost every time I go to work, I get a phone call. It's only when you're not here that he does it. Only when I'm not here. I think we've got to set up a sting. All right. The fact is, we don't know if he digs his way out, he shoes his way out, he jumps out, or he climbs out. I think it's time for some secret splodge surveillance. Multiple cameras aimed in all different directions. And let's just see what he's doing. Yeah. OK, let's do this. I'm going to catch him out. All right, Stefan, come with me. If he leaves the backyard, we're going to know about it. We're obviously going to focus most of our attention over in this corner because yep. that's where our evidence is. Yep. We think he's going there, but at the same time he could be using the drain pipe or even the vine. Okay. We just don't know. Turn away, Splodge. Splodge meets stealth. The feeling is that if we're here, Splodge isn't going to do his thing, so we can leave. As long as the cameras remain, the truth will also be there. Righto, Stefan, that's our last camera in place, so if you want to lock up, we're going to leave out the sliding door and hopefully Splodge will do what Splodge does. Okay. Whatever that is. Stay. Alright, so we'll record on this one and we go. All right. Never thought I'd say this, Splodge. Don't behave. All right, so we'll sneak around the front. Right. Then we'll watch the monitors from in there. Okay. Inside. So we're really quiet. Okay. We should be able to sneak back in there. You know he might not actually climb. He doesn't go out every day. Maybe he knows what we're up to. There's no sign of him. How long after you leave does he know? Oh, here we go. <laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> My God. No way. Oh, how's he doing that? He's hanging on with one paw. He's pulling himself up with his left paw only. It's like a dog chin up. He doesn't use the vine that much though. He doesn't. He just goes straight over the bricks. Yeah, he's, he's gonna get he's stuck. Straight. He's gonna get so stuck. So he's holding himself up with the vine, like almost as a, as a safety strap. It's too high because the vine's gonna move. He, he, he's not he got the white backwards. vine anymore. He's not got the vine anymore. He's incredible. It can't have been easy to scale that wall. No. He just stays there, looks around, checks out the neighbour's garden. It's also, that's a single brick width wall. Mm. It's only this wide. Yeah. What I find interesting about this though is that he's not trying to run away. He's not scurrying off into the distance. Oh. Oh. He's up on the roof. He's up on the roof. I guess I knew he was on the roof, but it's one thing to know it and another to see him just calmly jump up there. So who lives there? So that's uh, Stephanie and James, the immediate neighbours. And then that's further... <laughs> I don't know who this one is. <laughs> yeah. Steffi. Yeah, hi. Are you at work or at home? No, I'm, I'm actually at home. Oh, OK, good. Well, um, he's back. He's on the roof. 
<laughs> I'm not. Not to you, but he is on the roof. So do you want me to bring him home, or what do you want me to do? Uh, uh, look, is 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 it too much trouble to bring him home? Can you get him down? Yeah, yeah, I can get him down. So we just next door. It's, uh, there we go. <laughs> you little rascal. Oh. Clear. We were just watching these blogs. Where was he? He was just on the roof. It's usual place. <gasps> usual place? No, that's not usual, Bubby. Well, yeah. quite usual place. <laughs> you enjoy this, don't you? Mr. Relaxed. Mr. Composed. He, he will visit anybody. It's it, the, the thing is, at first you think he likes you, and then you realise it's got nothing to do with that. It's just that you're a, another living, breathing creature. So, you'll do. So how does it feel to have him back? <laughs> it's good, but, you know, this has happened a few times before. Yeah. Mate, I reckon we've got to make this time the last time. Ah, you hear that? Last time. That would be fantastic, Chris. I tell you, if you can do that, that would actually set my mind at ease a lot. So you want a solution? Yeah, I, no, I need a solution. Like, the, the only other one I've got is actually locking him inside the house in a small confined area where he does destruction and he's unhappy. Um, it's not good enough. All right, you'll get your solution. All right. Just not now, just um, <laughs> give me some time, mate. I'll, okay. um, I'll be back in just a little while. Okay, I'm looking forward I'll, to it. I'll see you later. Come on, puppy, in we go. Head down to Bondi Surf Club here and grab our solution to all of Bondi's problems. I don't think Stefan's going to be expecting this one. How are you going? Brownie. What's going on? Now, thanks for this. What's this all about? I'll explain it all later. Okay, it's in here. It's in here. I'll give you a hand. Right on. Heavy, isn't it? Two man job. Splodge doesn't have so much separation anxiety. He's got more scenery anxiety. He's not comfortable unless he can see the world. A happy dog is a dog with a view. I think I've got a big future with the sign right. Righto. Let's go get Stefan. Stefan? Yeah? Ready for you. Come puppy. We know Splodge is special. So, special dogs get special things. And this <laughs> is the solution to your problem. You're joking, aren't you? So, we discovered that Splodge doesn't dig out, he doesn't jump out, he climbs out. Yeah. But the big giveaway when we watched that vision was when he got up on the wall there, he stayed there. Did you notice how happy he was? Yeah. He's very content. His big thing is being up high. Because when you're not around, he doesn't have his security. When you leave, he feels very alone. All he can hear are different noises. He can see the cats there. He can hear different things going on, planes flying overhead. In his mind, chaos is breaking out all around him. But he's down low. He can't see what's going on. He can't know for sure that he's going to be safe. So what does he do? He looks to escape any possible way to find out. Essentially, Splodge is a dog that doesn't die wondering. He needs to know what's going on and discover it for himself. That's why it climbs up the walls and ends up on the roofs, just like the cats. There's a saying in the dog world that a happy dog is a dog with a view. It's why chihuahuas love being in those handbags. Splodge is a small dog. <laughs> he doesn't know that this is a safe neighbourhood. Cars going past, people talking. In his mind, those people, those machines could be conspiring against him. He doesn't want to run away, otherwise he'd be gone. He just wants to get up high. You reckon Splodge, are you going to climb? I've got to say, I'm actually quite nervous about this. You have a gut feeling, a belief that what you think is happening is really happening, but it's not until you put your solution into action that you know. Up here, puppy. Splodge. Splodge, come here. Oh, and we're about to find out. Up. Come on. On your throne, Splodgy. Wait. 
Look at that, looking out in the neighbourhood. <laughs> <laughs> Looks pretty comfortable up there. See how his ears are up? Yeah. He's got a certain pride and a certain confidence in the way he sits there, because all of a sudden, he's the king of the world. I can see over that fence, over the next one, into right. the backyards. This is what he wants. Is that a smile, Spodge? I was confident this would work. I didn't think it would work so quickly. Come on. Off you come. There you go. <laughs> oh, oh, that took five seconds to teach him. That's something. But he teaches himself. This is, this is yeah. his instinctive drive. This is what he wants to do. That's very nice. But I think we've got our result. In fact, I can see we've got our result. This is nothing like what I expected. I expected something that was, you know, containing, barricades, stopping him getting out, closing him in. This is, yeah, this is liberating him. He has urges, he has desires, and I think to suppress them, you know, dog like Splodge, could only lead to more problems. Here, we're working with his strengths, we're working with his desires, giving him what he wants, but also you get what you want, which is his security and his safety. What a response. I could not have dreamed he'd take to it that quickly and that strongly. He, he loves it. Thank you very much, Chris. My That's pleasure. awesome. No worries at all. He's taken to this like a duck to water. He just looks so content now. It's all right. Things going to be fine, OK? Things going to be good. Sorry, my cat's um, got an injury okay. here. Can we see you? Yeah, no, I'll get Chris for you straight away. Yeah. Just take a seat there. Thank you. Cheers. As soon as possible, please. Sure. It's going to be all right. Well, I just received a phone call from Mum and Dad, and um, they were saying to me that uh, Blackie's just arrived at home and he's suffering from some kind of injury, but I don't know exactly what it is. He disappeared for a day, a day and a half, and all of a sudden he's just come to the backyard and he's, he's looking like he's in a lot of pain. Hey Michael, how are you going? Hey mate, alright, come straight through. Hey little guy. Give me a go. Yeah, oh, mate, he's just. I don't know what's happened to him, he's just been injured somehow. And okay. Just hope he's gonna be okay, I'm just really concerned for him. Just put him down here? Yeah, he's just straight there. Alright, so tell me what's happened. Okay, well. He's, he disappeared for a day and a half, mate, and all of a sudden he's just uh, rocked up in the back porch and he's been dragging himself, so he's got no movement in the back legs. Yeah. He seems pretty, pretty flat and lethargy. Okay. Immediately when I look at Blackie, I'm just taken by the fact that he's just bewildered. He doesn't know what's happened to him. You see those injuries. He's been through hell. So no idea of what's happened? No idea, no idea. He doesn't look like there's any blood from... Oh, I can't see any blood, so... All right, I'll have to check out his back legs. It's all right, mate. No, I'm lucky this, mate. This might hurt a bit, mate. Come on. How old is Bucky now? Oh, nearly eight months. Okay. Okay, so... Ooh, it doesn't look right, does it? No, the front legs are working okay there. Yeah. He's got strength there, but... Look at that back leg there. Yeah, that's what worries me. See, it's just hanging limp there. His back legs are basically in an absolute mess. That right leg is just hanging there. What do you think's wrong with him? Either something like a fall or, or being hit by a car. Oh, um, good. Go on, Blake, you just lie there for me, mate. Come on, it's all right. There they Jeez. That's just hanging limber there. Oh, it's not good. He's certainly either done the ligaments or, or has a fracture in that, that lower part of his, his leg there. Okay. So he's going to be okay, mate. He just, yeah. just means so much to us. Uh... So he's got an issue down the bottom of his leg here. Right. But what really worries me, mate, is the top part of his, his femur here. Yeah. What's going on there? Ooh. I'd say he's got a fracture there. Okay, okay. Come on, mate, sorry, buddy. You just relax there. All right, so, mate, he's got major issues in this back right leg here. Let's have a look at the back left, though. Here. Mate, I think he's got a problem here as well. Just at the base of the femur. See, one leg with a problem is, is manageable. But two, we're getting to the stage where he's going to have real trouble getting around. That leg's not as bad as the other leg, is it? No, no, it's not. Okay. I mean, he, he, he can use the leg at least, but yeah, mate, this could be a real problem. I'm just hoping it's going to be okay, it's all right. 
we're going to have to take some x-rays and just see what is going on. I, I can feel there's problems there, but without taking x-ray, we don't know for sure. I guess if this is any sort of a guide to his will to live, then, you know, I'd be pretty keen to do everything we can for him just to Maybe see if we can get him through. This is just a bit of a check everything shot. Yep. <laughs> That's my possum. Oh, it's hard to avoid them right now. <laughs> what is that? It's a baby possum. So I'm just warming him up. He's coming really cold. I thought you'd slip the chicken fillet there for a second. <laughs> chicken fillet. <laughs> Despite Blackie having so many things wrong with him right now, the thing is that he's young. And when he's young, he's got every chance of healing himself. So I guess in response to that, we're going to give him every shot. X-ray. Obviously Blackie's had just an awful, awful few days, but what Blackie really needs right now is a little bit of luck. He can make do with three legs, but he can't make do with two good legs and one bad one. He needs three functioning legs, and hopefully these x-rays will show that. Whew. It's pretty amazing. We'll just put him in there. Come on, buddy. Hey, hey, hey. It's, okay, it's, okay. it's okay, it's okay. Hey, they're incredible. All right, so that's his pelvis here and his legs here. Now. His right leg should be sitting like this one here. Why is it so far back? See how there it's been pushed right through? So he's fractured his right femur, his right leg, basically where it inserts into the hip joint. It's been rammed right through. The problem with this break being so bad and so far away from where it should be is the fact that when it pushes out, when it snaps, when that bone snapped and ended up there, it's taken the nerves with it and it's torn the nerves. That's why his legs outstretched and ha has no feeling and has no movement. Yeah. The problem with that is, I'm not going to mince my words, we can't regrow those nerves. If that leg's not functioning, it's more of a hindrance to him than a help. I know it's hard to take, but we're looking at that, we're going to have to amputate that leg. Telling anyone that their much-loved pet is going to lose a leg, it, it's one of the toughest jobs a vet has. You don't want to be in that situation, trust me. But as if that's not enough, the problem we've got is that he's got a fracture in this one as well. So he's got a fracture in his left leg and a really, really bad fracture in his right leg. They say with cats and dogs that they're born with three legs and a spare. Well, right now he's got two. And no spares. And the spare's flat. Yeah. Well, we've got to fix this fracture. Okay. If we don't do that, I'm, I'm sorry to say it, it's just, there's nothing we can do. This is going to be the fight of a lifetime for him. Blackie can't function on just two legs. He needs three working legs. I can manage with him losing one leg, but if Blackie loses the extra leg and only has two functioning ones, there's no point. How could this have happened? What inflicted this so much injury to, to Blackie? I'll level with you. I, to me, that looks like he's been kicked from behind. The simple fact that very few things cause those femurs to rip themselves out of joint and be pushed forward. So whatever's happened to him has been a sudden impact from behind and forced that femur forward like that. To my way of thinking, a deliberate act. What, for a laugh, for a cheap shot, to impress your mates, I, I don't know, but it sickens me. I know it's probably hard for you to take on board the fact this could have been something very deliberate, but I guess that's the way the evidence points at the moment. Very distressing, very upsetting if anything, so. We'll, we'll do what we have to do. He is a fighter and I'm sure he will get through and, you know, I just hope he's going to be okay. It's just amazing, isn't he? He's just agreeable to any <laughs> situation. Still purring. So he will need a big clip, because obviously both right and left back legs are being operated on. Okay, so where will we do it from? I'm pretty much going to shave the back half of mm -hmm. Blackie. <laughs> so pretty much from here back. Amazing. Blackie's got a big anaesthetic, a leg amputation plus a leg pinning, all in the one surgery. It's about as big an operation as you can get. That is the right side, isn't it? Right, let's see if the leg that has to go. Good. That's important. All 
right, moment of truth for Blakey. So I'm going to take off the right leg with amputation first of all, and Tony steps in and reconstructs that left leg. So let's go for it. Good thing with this, without the nerve supply to the leg now, he won't feel it when he wakes up because the leg's effectively numb. That's it. Yeah. So that'll be in his advantage. Yeah. There we go. Sciatic nerve just there. I guess the, an amputation sounds simple enough, it's just a matter of getting the leg off, but you do have to be careful obviously for the fact that there is a very big artery, a very big vein and also a nerve in there. You've got to find those, just delicately remove them, tie them off and then get on with the business. Do you want to go behind it a bit easier for... Oh, I can mm -hmm. rotate, yeah, just a bit easier for you to... Easy as that. Uh, we're back up to 99. Okay. So we've now removed Blackie's leg, and now it's a matter of just getting those muscle layers and pulling them up over the bone that's been left behind, just so there's no rubbing and no irritation. And then we stitch the skin closed, and Blackie's our three-legged cat. Okay, so job is now half done. We now move on to the other side and complete the job. This is quite distorted, this fracture, mm. because of the healing. We're into his joint now. We can see the joint fluid. It's amazing he's actually got around so well on mm. it, considering it's fractured. Yes, it's not far out of joint, but mm. it does need replacing. So we're just breaking down all the adhesions. It's cat's bones. Someone once said, as long as you have one end of a bone and the other end of a bone in the same room, that it'll heal. <laughs> and they have, they have remarkable recuperative powers with fractures. Mm. Even though the amputation, I guess, looks the most dramatic, the most important part of today's surgery is what Tony's doing. Repairing that leg, reconstructing the, the base of that femur so it can support weight is the essential ingredient in today's surgery. If that doesn't hold, if that can't support Blackie's weight, then Blackie has no chance of walking again. So what we're going to do here is put a stainless steel wire to stop it rotating and then we put a little small pin up the centre which holds it in position. So a little bit of force required. Obviously repairing a leg is always important but in Blackie's case this just has to be 100% straight and support all that weight because if it doesn't work Blackie can't walk and that'll be, that'll be no future for Blackie. There we go. Now the finished product, the fracture's now realigned and his kneecap will now function. Yeah. So we're just stitching up the muscles and the connective tissue to help support the joint. We'll just make it a little bit tighter than it had been before just to give him a little bit of extra support in the joint. And we'll know in the next day or so how quickly he's going to be up and about. Okay, final stitch. So really our work's done here now, it's really just a waiting game to see if Blackie can get the coordination, I guess, and the willpower as well, to walk again. It's a little bit stiff still from all the adhesions, but that kneecap is now sliding back in the groove that it was intended to. Mm. This is outrageous. What have we got here? Hello, how are you? I'm Chris. Nice to meet you. Thank you. This is amazing. Thank you. Thank you. He's a little bit quiet at the moment, obviously, after everything he's been through. You can see what we've done here. So he's, that's the leg that's been operated on there. Yes. And on the other side is where the leg's been taken off. That's right. Yeah. Like here, back, pony. Yeah, he's a bit so. I was actually really worried about how Andrew was going to react to seeing Blackie with just three legs and a big scar on the other leg. But geez, she walked in there, looked at it, surveyed the situation, went, eh, about as I expected. Turns out she's a tough one in the family. 
obviously going to take quite a while for him to, to fully recover. He's lost such an important part of his body, plus he's had an, op had an operation here at the same time. So it's, it's a really tough thing for him to get over and, he, and he's only young. Look, he, he's just shown that blacky spirit and really fought on really hard. But I can tell that he's, he's happy to see you. I can feel that he's purring and, and when he stretches his feet out like that, it's a sign of comfort. It's a sign that he's very comfortable. Yeah. And then he, it's a sign of affection as well. Do you mind if I say, tell me if this is right, or blackie, in there, or morphos? Hey? Is it okay? Yes. Close? It's spot on. It's okay? All right, back now. Love you and leave you. I'll be back very soon to come. Bye bye. Okay. Hey, Blackie, how are you doing? Oh, you look good. Yes, you do. You look good. I'm going to take you through for your exercises, okay? Yeah, but go see Chris. Oh, you're purring again. There we are, just gentle. Come on, Ben. Here he is. Hey, Blackie. Hey, there buddy. he is. Hey, hey, matey. You're still hanging in there, aren't you? He's got a pretty good range of motion, though. Yeah. It hasn't really stiffened up. No. So we'll just give him a little bit of physio and make sure all these joints are nice and mobile. Yep. Starting at the toes and work our way out. Oh, he likes that. You don't mind that, Blackie? Mm, so it's good. Now Blackie, if all your joints are moving freely, we might be able to give you a bit of a test drive. Yay! You up for it? I guess that the best way to think of Blackie's recovery is, is like a human. If a human had an operation like this and just lay down in bed for weeks, they would seize up. And Blackie's no different, he has to get mobile. If we can't get this back leg to move, then he's just no chance of ever walking again. All right, so what we might do is get a little supporting brace, yep. otherwise known as a tea towel. Yes. And if you can just hold him up there. Okay, I'm up. Yep. Run this through here. Give him a go. That's it. There's a good boy. Even just that static movement there. Yeah. Is good because it's it's strengthening up those, those legs, those quadricep muscles yeah. and, and hamstrings of his. Yeah. There we go. Good boy. There we good go. Good boy. Here we go. Here we go. Good boy. Here we go. Come on then. It doesn't look like we're achieving huge successes here, but you know, it's little steps in every sense of the word. Even just putting some weight on that leg lets him know how to balance himself and also builds up the strength in those muscles. And it, it takes a lot of time. He's never had to walk this way before. And, and he's learning. It's good, Blackie. It's good. Come on. There we That's go. That's it. Good boy. Good boy. I'm pretty confident that the family will be able to handle the physio. I think maybe if they transfer the time they were spending cooking to physiotherapy, then we're talking 12 hours a day, I'd say, that they'll be able to devote to Blackie, so they'll be fine. Hey, Michael. Hey, mate. Hey, mate. Hey, Gal. I've got something to show you. So you come right on through. Thanks. And your boy, mate. Wow. Oh wow, how are you mate? Hey, how are you going? Now, we want to test him out. Okay, you got to well, see this, okay? Right, I want to see this. Blackie, you ready? You going to show off? Have a look at this. He now has a bit more faith in this leg. Oops. And <laughs> see, look at this. <laughs> yeah. So he's actually supporting that now. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Which is great. Yeah, of course. That's great. That's good news. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's fantastic. Over the moon, mate. This is awesome. Yeah. This is great. All right, now that I'm taking Blackie home, what do I have to do? Is there anything that I um, do I have to exercise his leg or...? I, I guess the most important thing is to, to not let him get too confident because he feels now as though he's capable of doing anything. He's not, so we just need to just hold him back and try and restrict his exercise a fair bit. The important thing is also to, to give him plenty of physio, so still stretch out that left leg of his, that back left leg of his, and make sure it, it doesn't develop any fibrous tissue and, and then he, he keeps that nice and mobile and nice and strong. Blackie's just made a truly incredible recovery and I'm almost in awe of the little guy. He's moving around brilliantly, he's happy, he's content, and you bet, he's ready to go home. And Blackie, mate, 
And it's a big moment. It sure is. Hey, you've been so good, Blackie. There you go. You've missed you, mate. See, Black. See, mate, you stay out of trouble, all right? See you. Thanks. All right, cheers. Thank you. I'm just totally thrilled. I can't believe it. Seeing him today and the way he's been moving around and that, but it's a great result. It's good to have Blackie back again, so he's in good spirits and very, very pleased. It's time to go home. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way.